Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Sri Tips, and today what I have here is a uh, batch of gold filled scrap that I'm going to uh, process today. As I sort through the scrap that we accumulate, whenever I come across a piece of gold filled material, I just throw it in a bag on my uh, on my workbench over here and then I wait until I get a uh, fair amount of it built up and then what I'll do is go through and sort through it all clean it up mechanically the best I can uh, removing uh, any steel pieces or plastic or anything like that that I can take off of there to leave just the bare gold filled scrap and what this will do is this will clean it up nicely uh, for when I go to put the uh, gold filled material into the acids. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this material I have here. I've uh, got some gold filled watches here. They still got the movements in them and I'll take those movements out and just uh, save the cases. This is a watch band here. It may have a gold filled, uh, gold filled tops. The inside is going to be steel and then these tops I'll take off one at a time and save those as gold filled. Uh, here's a watch. Here's a whole bunch of watch bands. Now these bands as you can see on the inside are steel but the tops that they put on these are gold filled so I'll pull each of these tops off and include them in the batch. I'll have to go through all these bands and pull the gold filled material off the steel parts, throw the steel parts away and save the gold filled material. Here's a bunch more watches I have over here. I don't know if you can see that, uh, what it reads on there. It uh, says gold filled. Here's a uh, bracelet that has uh, some steel springy material in it. I'll have to take each one of these pieces off and include that in the batch. Got some earrings, cufflinks. Here's a bracelet. Here's a whole bunch of uh, gold filled wires or uh, bracelets and necklaces that I just threw in there. I'll have to go through that and pick out the uh, steel parts. This is gold filled wire. I save those. Here's some gold filled earrings. Here's a little pendant here that's gold filled. I don't know if you can read that on the back there. Let's see if I can get that to where it can be read. It'll say something like 1 20th 12k gold filled. Uh, here's some more gold filled pieces. Jewelry items, earrings, here's some pins and pendants that are made of gold filled material it'll say right on there gold filled uh, here's some more pieces little charms that go on a uh, charm bracelet there it says gold filled on it there's one that's got gold filled written right on it I can tell the gold filled material because it has a different look to it it looks just about like gold, but it's not quite, well, actually, <laughs> you'd, be, uh, you'd be very good at what you do if you can uh, tell the gold filled pieces from the, uh, the actual gold material. These things are pretty high content. Uh, these uh, bangle bracelets here, they got, usually have a lot of gold in them. Got a couple of those over here. That'll make a nice yield. Here's a gold filled chain. These are gold filled balls on a gold filled chain. Some more gold filled chains and pendants over here. It's got gold filled written right on it. I don't know if you can see down there. It's kind of hard to see. It's written right down there where my thumb is. And a whole host of other things. Here's a uh, gold filled watch case. Here's a gold filled bracelet, a couple of them. Gold filled uh, lockets and charms, some more chains. Here's a piece, uh, it's got a whole bunch of gold filled wire wrapped around it to uh, make a piece of jewelry. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and clean all this stuff up and we'll get it in some acid, dissolve out all the base metals and then get these foils uh, separated from the base metals and then go from there. What I'll do here is uh, start by taking these watch movements apart 
I'm going to remove the pieces of steel and the non-gold filled material here. Just set it off to the side. The back of this one happens to be steel, so I'm going to take that off there. And I'll put the watch movement in here. I'll save that. That's steel, so I can get rid of that. This part's good. What I'll do is uh, just press out the uh, crystal like so. And this is the uh, good piece that I want to save. That's the gold filled part of the watch. Here's a gold filled locket. It's got some pictures in it. I don't want to include them. So I'll take that little ring and a piece of cellophane off of there. Throw that away. Keep the ring. I dig out the picture. Throw it away. Same with this one. Keep the ring. Get rid of the picture and the piece of cellophane. And then there's our gold filled piece. Okay, these type of watch bands have a uh, steel frame to them. And the uh, tops up here are gold filled. So what I'll do is I just take a little pair of pliers here. And I try to get a hold of uh, an end of it. And I just peel that piece off. Now save this. We don't want the steel parts going into our uh, into our batch here. So I'm going to go ahead and peel all these little pieces of the gold filled stuff off the top. And I'm going to save it. And then that will go in with our batch. And all we have left is the uh, the steel. And I'll just throw that away. Here's all the good stuff. I'll go ahead and add that to the batch. Here's a piece that's got a little pearl on it. It says gold field right there on that little tag. And so what I'll do there is before I commit it to the batch, I'll go ahead and pull the pearl out, save it. Just throw that in with the batch now. Here's another little piece with some uh, pieces of turquoise in it. I just uh, bend the prongs back on those, save it. I can always uh, use these pieces of uh, turquoise to do a repair on someone else's jewelry so I save all this stuff but I don't want to include it in my gold filled batch here's another watch the way I get rid of those it's got a steel back on it and a gold filled face so here's the gold filled part that's the part I want to keep put that in the batch over here and then I'll just save the movement Here's some gold filled uh, earrings. It's got little markings right here. It says 120th 12K GF. What I'll do with these, it's got some jade in here. I just kind of peel back the, uh, the setting to get the jade out of the metal there. And then I'll save the uh, metal and commit the uh, gold filled metal to my batch and save the uh, pieces of jade. the jade save it stuff like these charms each one of them has a little uh, marking on it here it says gold 120th 12k gold filled this is, says 14k gold filled on it this doesn't need any processing I just throw those right in the batch over here hey, here's a gold filled watch case that's gonna have a little steel uh, uh, piece right in here that I need to get out that's completely gold filled so that can go in the, in the batch and I just kind of break these off the top. That's all gold filled, so that can go in the batch. And it just comes out. There's the steel pin. There's some more steel parts down inside there that I need to get out. It unscrews like this. It's a little brass screw with a steel component in it. I don't want that going in the batch, so this stuff I'll just throw away. This can go in the batch. This is the top of the crown of the watch. That's the good gold filled material right there. This is junk, brass, and steel. It can be thrown away. 
Here's a uh, gold filled watch casing with a little crystal. If I can pop them out like that, I save those so I can uh, maybe do a repair on someone else's watch and then just add the gold filled part to my back. Here's a gold filled bracelet. It's got uh, a brass catch in it inside of here. I don't see anything magnetic here, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that whole thing right to the batch. These are all pieces that are marked uh, 1 20th 12K or 1 20th 14K gold filled. These got a couple little stones in them. I'll try to get those out of there before I throw it in the batch, but uh, this can all just be added right straight to the batch. No other processing is required here. All right, this is a big wad of wires that are all uh, connected, intertwined, and tangled up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to look at them real careful and just start cutting the pieces away into my uh, batch here. And then as I come across these uh, steel catches, I'll go ahead and uh, get them off of there. I just cut the, pe the good metal away that doesn't have a catch on it and add it to the batch so that that way it slowly gets the wad of uh, change will s just slowly get smaller. If this one is important. It says 10K RGP bezel stainless back. This is it right there. What we got here, that RGP means roll gold plate or gold filled. So this part's gold filled. It's going to go in the batch. The movement is not gold. So I'm going to take it out. Well, actually, I'm not even going to save it. The stem's not there with it. And it's got a stainless steel back. This is going in the trash. Here's an old Elgin wind up with a second hand on it. And it's running. So uh, I'll probably just hang on to this one and try to list it on my eBay store for sale separately rather than uh, tearing it up because it is in working condition. Here's a 10K gold filled ring. It's got a stone in it so what I do here is I try to get my screwdriver down underneath the uh, setting for it and bend that out. Okay, I had to pull this piece up here. If you look, I uh, peeled off some of the metal back from it. It was a bangle bracelet. It's got, uh, somebody's used soft solder lead to try and repair it. And if you look here, you can tell if it's soft when it does like that. See that? That's lead. I'm going to exclude this piece and uh, maybe clean it up and treat it separately another time. But I don't want all that lead going into my batch here. Here's all our clean metal. All the steel stuff's been taken out of it. All the stones have been removed. And uh, here's the stones. I, that wasn't all of them that came from this batch, but that's some of the stones I took out. This is a material that I decided to exclude. It's the watch bands with the covers, the tops that have gold filled uh, tops there I'll pull those off and gold gets up around five thousand dollars a gram or an ounce here's gold field watch that's working so I decided to save that I'm looking to sell that separately on my eBay store so now we're ready to go ahead and weigh this up and get started all right I'm gonna go ahead and put all the gold filled stuff in this container here and we'll get a weight on it Looks like we got 740.7 grams of gold filled scrap here. Okay, I've got a uh, 4 liter beaker up here with distilled water in it, about a liter, a little over a liter. And I'm burning off all the uh, oils and junk from this uh, metal, heat it to redness, and then I just add it to the beaker.
Now this is important to notice here. I've got some uh, metal in the bottom of the dish here that's molten. And I want to get that and keep that out of my batch here. It's staying molten just from the heat of the dish. And so that's probably going to be lead there. Something lead in here. So I want to exclude anything that uh, is lead from this batch. So what I'll do is I'll let that harden, stiffen up, and then I'll get it out of the uh, get it out of the melt dish and proceed here. See that's staying molten just from the uh, heat of the dish. That's lead. This lead is probably from soft solder. I just wait till it solidifies and then take it out and get it out of the batch. I don't want that going in with my batch to cause problems. Probably solder which has tin in it and so I want to exclude this from the batch. Go ahead and add some more to the uh, melt dish here and keep going with the heating. Keeping an eye out for anything that might be lead in here. Get rid of it. That's another reason why we heat this material to uh, make sure we don't get any lead in there. The lead will tend to melt and fall down to the bottom of the dish. And we can uh, get rid of it then. Another reason for annealing our, our material before we commit it to the acid. Got all the scrap now in this four liter beaker. Uh, got still water in there with it. I'm gonna start adding small doses of nitric acid now. Add some heat. And uh, dissolving out the base metals with dilute nitric acid here. That's about 100 ml or so to start out with just let this react. Add another 100 ml or so of uh, nitric acid here. It's been on now for about a half an hour. I've got probably 300 ml in here of nitric acid. I'm going to keep track of it. Uh, 100 ml at a time. I'm going to pour a little bit in this jar here so I can keep a little bit more accurate measure on it. I'm going to add another 100 ml to the uh, to the beaker here of uh, concentrated nitric acid. Gotta add it slow because this is gonna be hot. And uh, we started out with 700 or so, what was it, 750 ml or 750 grams of, of gold filled scrap. 
and it's going to take about three and a half lit ml, three and a half ml per gram of scrap. So we're looking at about uh, 22 to 2500 ml of nitric acid to get all the uh, base metals dissolved out of this gold filled scrap. Notice the uh, levels beginning to rise here after I added that uh, 100 ml dose of nitric acid. I chose a tall beaker here, bigger than I actually needed to uh, account for this uh, swelling of the reaction when I pour the acid in. Make sure I got a lot of headroom here. Let's go ahead and put another mark here. We got about another 100 ml in there. I've done a little math here. I had 740 grams of uh, gold filled scrap, and uh, it's going to take about 3.5 ml per gram, which equates out to about 2590 ml of concentrated nitric acid to get all the, uh, the base metals dissolved out of the gold filled scrap. It's been about 10 minutes or so since I've added that last uh, dose of nitric. I'm going to go ahead and add another 100 ml here slowly. The trick is to add it slow, but to get the nitric acid in there as quickly as possible so we can get these uh, base metals dissolved. That's about another 100 ml there. Been on for about an hour now. All that nitric that I've added has been used up. I got about 500 ml in there so far. Uh, this is hot, so I gotta add this real slow. I'm adding some more concentrated nitric acid. I'm gonna try to put another 100 ml in there. Let that react. It's real hot, so I'm gonna put it in a lot slower than what I said. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to add a little bit more nitric acid now. Just a touch more and see what happens here. What's going on with these uh, this uh, vigorous reaction is there's a whole bunch of base metals still left that need to be dissolved. The solution's real hot, so when that nitric acid hits that hot metal, it reacts real vigorous like that. So I gotta be careful and pour that stuff in real slow. It's been about uh, a couple minutes since that last addition. Go ahead and try to get 100 ml in here so we can give it a while to react. Pretty close. That's about 100 ml right there. Got 600 ml in there so far. All right, it's been about 15 minutes since I put that last dose of nitric in. Try to add a little bit more here, so if we can uh, continue to dissolve the base metals out of that uh, gold-filled scrap. Seventy-five ml there. Looks like it's going to overflow, but it won't. That's why I pick a tall beaker for this uh, process.
As the base metals get dissolved more and more throughout this process, uh, the uh, reaction will calm down and won't be that vigorous when there's not as much base metal in there to dissolve. But right now it's probably at its peak for danger for having an overflow. So that's why it's important to add this acid real slow. I've got 700 in there now. It's been on here for about two hours now and I've got 700 ml of nitric acid in there. I'm going to fill up my jar here again to about the 400 ml level and we'll see if we can get this in there slowly. ml in there. We've been on the heat now for two and a half hours. I'm going to go ahead and get some more of this nitric acid into this beaker. another 100 ml in there so I got 900 in there total right now rinse down the sides of the beaker here Start adding some more nitric here. See if we can get a little bit more in there. four hours and I've got 1500 ml of concentrated nitrate you can see the uh, the gold foils are starting to float to the top there this stuff down here these are gold foils all the uh, base metals have been dissolved out of that there's probably still a little bit more that's got to go but uh, it's real light you can feel it real light on the end of my uh, stirring rod there and uh, this is what the gold filled scrap will look like when all the base metals has been removed. It's just little gold foils. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, another couple hundred ml of nitric acid to my jar over here and then start carefully pouring that in and see where we are with this reaction. It's about 200 ml in the jar there. I've already got 1500 in the uh, reaction vessel here so I must pour some of this in real slow got the heat on medium so it's uh, fairly warm in there and as you can see I don't get a whole bunch of reaction like I was earlier in the video because most of the base metals have been dissolved 
out of the gold filled scrap. See, I, already, I just poured 100 ml in there easy without the, a real vigorous reaction. So most of the base metals have been removed here. It's about four hours into the reaction now. Still got a little bit more base metals to go. I can tell by the way it's uh, reacting there and by the amount of fumes that it's producing. So we'll just keep adding nitric acid until we get the, get it all in there and get those base metals dissolved. in there with not much of a reaction so now I've got 1700 ml of concentrated nitric acid in the reaction vessel let this cook I've been on the boil now for about six hours I've got a piece here that's fairly solid and uh, I don't know what that is. It looks like it might be aluminum. So I'm going to pull this out. It had some gold coating on it that I was able to get off. But I'm going to take this piece out and set it off to the side and uh, get it out of there because if that's aluminum, I don't want that in my reaction vessel. This is the piece of metal that I removed from the batch. I wasn't sure what it was. I thought it looked like aluminum, but now that I've... Uh, checked it with my magnet I can see that it's uh, magnetic here so it's uh, either going to be steel iron or uh, nickel it's probably iron but as you can see the rest of the foils are looking real good now everything's real lightweight down in there I don't feel nothing real heavy uh, all the pieces of uh, gold are just foils of what they used to be. I've only got 1700 in here so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let this cool off give it a rest overnight then I'll come back out tomorrow morning and uh, and siphon off the liquid and then add some more nitrate and see if we get any more reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the heat off now and just let this cool down overnight. Give it a rest. Come back out tomorrow. Yeah, I almost forgot. What I'm going to do here is add about a liter of distilled water to my uh, mixture here uh, to dilute it down. Otherwise, it kind of gets gelatinous or uh, it's real thick. And hard to uh, work with so if I dilute it down now while it's still hot there it's about a liter of distilled water added to it stir this up and then when I come out tomorrow it should be uh, a little bit easier to work with It is the next morning and the solution has been allowed to cool to ambient temperature which is about 85 degrees right now. What I'm going to do is bring the, uh, bring the beaker out here. This is a plastic tube. I'm going to fill it full of distilled water. I'm using distilled water here because this solution is going to have silver in it. So I don't want to use any tap water. Fill it up with distilled water. Now I'm going to put my thumb over one end, like so. Stick the other end in this tube here. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to move this bucket out of the way. Just put it down on the ground. It'll siphon faster and easier for me. Got my thumb on one end. Put the other end in the uh, liquid that I want to siphon. And just let my thumb off.
little more distilled water to rinse the tube off here. Here's what's left in our beaker. These are the gold foils that we're after. And what I'm going to do now is uh, add a little bit more nitric acid here and see if I can uh, get any more of the base metals to dissolve out of there. Alright, here's our solution that we just siphoned out. What I'll do is I'll filter that and because there's probably going to be some gold foils and some, some suspended gold material in here. Put this back up on the stove here. Give it a little heat. Now I'm going to add about uh, 250, 300 ml of distilled water here. Okay, I've got it up to about the 800 ml level here. I'm going to add another 200 ml of concentrated nitric acid here, and we're going to let this. Uh, let this acid really do its number on the uh, any remaining base metals that might be in here. There, that's about 200 ml of concentrated nitric acid. I'm going to turn the heat up on this to medium high and just let it go. While I'm waiting for this reaction to happen here, I'm going to go ahead and filter out the solution that we uh, that we uh, just siphoned out of the uh, gold filled scrap. This is the solution that I siphoned off of our gold filled scrap and uh, what, what I'm doing here is I'm going to filter out any solids that are in here, capture anything that's solid in a filter paper and then I'll add that back into the batch over here and down here this solution will have nitric acid, some free nitric acid and some silver in it. So what I'll probably end up doing with this is adding some scrap silver to it until no more silver will dissolve. That means all the nitric acid has been consumed. And then I'll add hydrochloric acid and uh, precipitate out silver chloride and then convert the silver chloride to uh, pure silver metal. This is our gold filled scrap. I've got, uh, I had about 800 ml of solution in there. And I added 200 ml of concentrated nitric acid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this boil until uh, no more fumes are evolved and uh, that should uh, pretty much take care of all the base metals that might be in with that gold filled scrap. It's been about uh, 15 minutes since I added that 200 ml of uh, concentrated nitric to the gold filled foils and as you can see I'm getting a lot of uh, red fumes evolving which means I've still got some base metals down in there. So far, I've got 1,900, 1,900 ml of concentrated nitric acid. Uh, I've passed over those gold foils. I've got distilled water here, about 200 ml. I'm going to add it to our nitric acid beaker here. And then I'm going to add another 100 ml of concentrated nitric acid to that to bring it up to the 300 ml level. And now I'm going to add that into the reaction vessel here. That'll be a total of 2,100 ml of nitric acid been added so far to the uh, gold filled scrap that we've got in the reaction vessel here. That's 2,100 ml so far. Or wait a minute, 2,000. 2,000 ml of concentrated nitric acid has been added so far. All right, the solution's been boiling now. It's got 2,000 ml of uh, nitric in there. 
I'm going to go ahead and add, this to get dehydrated, so I'm going to add 300 ml of distilled water here. And then I'm going to add another 100 ml of nitric acid. Just to get this uh, reaction rehydrated. We got 2100 ml of nitric acid on the gold filled scrap now. Take a look in here and see what those uh, foils are looking like. Oh yeah, they're, they're very lightweight now. Hardly any weight to them at all. It's mostly just gold foils left. So we're going to let this boil for a little while longer. And then, uh, just to make sure all the base metals are gone. And then we'll proceed to the next step. Alrighty, all that solution has uh, passed through the filter now. Got some residue in here with a few pieces of gold foils. I'll add that back into the uh, batch when we get uh, later on in the process. Here's our uh, gold foils. This has been on boiling now since I started today for about four hours. And I think we're pretty much done here. Uh, there's our gold foils. You can see the base metals are uh, completely gone. And nothing left here but the foils, and that's what we want to see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and let this solution off and then we'll filter all that out of there and get the foils separated from the solution. Let this cool off. I'm adding about a liter of distilled water here to, uh, to dilute the solution and help cool it off. Today is day three. I've allowed the uh, solution to cool down again overnight. I'm going to begin uh, here by taking out this filter. This has got some residue in it along with some gold foils. And I'm going to add that back in with the batch. I'm going to set it here temporarily in this melt dish for later on. And uh, now what I'll do is I'm going to transfer the solution out of this flask. It's already been filtered. I'm going to transfer it out of this flask back into this flask here. And then what I'll do is I'll just save this solution for later processing. It's going to have silver in it and it's going to have some active nitric acid in it. I'll add some scrap silver here and consume the remaining nitric acid then precipitate silver chloride and uh, convert it back to pure silver metal. Set this out of the way. And then set the filter back up so I can filter the solution out of my uh, gold foils back here. Get this thing out of the way here. Okay, just like before, I'm going to go ahead and siphon this material or this liquid out of our second. Uh, nitric treatment, got a tube full of water, thumb over one end, tube down inside, uh, solution on one Siphon, just let my thumb off, let all this liquid siphon off down into this uh, second beaker.
Here's our gold filled uh, chunks. There's some uh, stuff in here I might exclude. There's a piece of wire right there. Looks like steel wire. I'll get that out of there. This looks like there might still be some solid pieces in here. All the base metals have not been uh, taken out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this again with some uh, dilute nitrate. I've got some distilled water here. I'm going to add about a, about 200 ml of distilled water. And then I'm going to add on top of that about 100 ml of concentrated nitric. And I'm going to go ahead and just let this boil and see if we get some more reaction out of this. The longer I spend here, the less trouble I'll have later on when I go to uh, dissolve them foils in aqua region. I'm waiting for this uh, reaction to take place over here. I'm going to go ahead and just like before, I'm going to go ahead and filter out the solution that I just siphoned off. Try to collect any solids in this filter paper here. Okay, the solution's on boiling now, and I've got a lot of red fumes coming out of there. It's been about 20 minutes since I put that on, and uh, judging by the amount of fumes there, I still had a bunch of metal in there to, uh, to dissolve, so I'm just going to let that go, and while I'm waiting for that reaction to happen, I'm just going to continue to go ahead and uh, filter the rest of this uh, solution that I siphoned off from the, uh, previously. This reaction hydrated. I'm going to go ahead and add about 300 ml of distilled water here so that the base metals will have some place to go when they dissolve. The solution's been boiling for about two and a half hours now. There's very uh, little fumes in here, and I think we've got all the base metals pretty much dissolved out now. I've uh, got 2200 ml of concentrated nitric acid in there. I've cut the heat off and just go ahead and let this cool down now. All right, my second uh, solution has filtered off here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the filter out and add it to the uh, melt this year. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of ice to this solution. So it's just ice made with tap water. It should be okay. Try to get it cooled down so we can do a filtration on it. All right, I got a big piece of filter paper here. I'm going to put it down in the filter so it uh, kind of rides up along the edges a little bit so that I can catch all the material in the filter as I pour the gold filled scrap through it. Alright, the solution I believe is cooled down. It's below 100 degrees. I got 97 Fahrenheit. 36 degrees Celsius. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and try to pour the uh, gold filled scrap into this filter, try to collect all the gold foils in here. This is the same flask that I used for uh, the dilute nitric treatment number two. I'm just going to pour it right in on top of that.
this is looking pretty good. Uh, the solution is real cloudy and purple colored and the filtrate coming out of that is like blue colored and it's fairly clear so I'm getting all the particulate uh, material filtered out of the uh, solution and that's what I want to see here's all our gold foils this is the good material that we want to refine into pure gold and you can see they're all just shells of what it used to be there's a watch case it's just a shell and that's what all this material is going to be it's just going to be the shells of uh, the thick coating of gold over the gold filled material and all the base metals have been dissolved out so now what we got is the gold foils we're going to get them in this filter and give them a quick rinse and then we're going to proceed with the process all right, I'm going to give this a quick rinse with some distilled water. We'll let this drain out, and this will conclude the recovery part of the gold-filled scrap. We've recovered the foils, and now we're going to go uh, into the second part of the video, which is the refining of the gold foils. I've got all the solution filtered out of the gold foils now. What I'm going to do is I've got the uh, two filters from the previous two filterings in here in this melt dish. And I want to include these in the batch. So now what I'm going to do is carefully take this uh, funnel here and I'm going to get the, uh, the foils down into this melt dish so we can uh, do an incineration on this. it out like a little foil pouch just like that thank you thank you okay here's the gold foils got them in the melt dish with the other two uh, filters from the previous filtering we're going to go to the next step, which is incineration. This is my homemade incineration oven. It's made from a uh, Black & Decker type little toaster oven. And what I've done is uh, inside the case, I've insulated with, with some, uh, some ceramic wool. i got some fiberglass here in the back, just kind of propped up against it. To, keep it from losing heat back here and what I'm going to try to do is uh, go ahead and put my uh, gold filled scrap into this homemade incineration oven and see what kind of result we get here all right in this oven inside of here is a little thermostatically controlled switch and what I did is I put some insulation down inside of there to isolate the uh, heating chamber in here from the thermostatically controlled switch so that the heat inside the oven will go beyond what it's normally supposed to heat up to. And if I see those uh, heating tubes turn off, I've got a little fan installed up here. And what I do is I just, uh, just plug it in briefly to uh, cool it down, cool down the switch just a little bit so I can get the uh, heating elements to come back on and uh, this is my homemade burnout oven paid five bucks for it at the thrift store see how it works all right we're getting pretty hot in here I can see some flames that dish is up to 521 Fahrenheit 272 Celsius I'm just gonna leave this in here and let it burn Okay, I just heard the uh, thermostat click and you can see the uh, glow of the tubes going down. I'm going to put the fan in right quick, cool the thermostat in here off and it should come right back on.
dish is at 338 Celsius, 641 Fahrenheit. So it's getting up there. We've had it in the oven now for about 45 minutes. The dish is 355 centigrade, 671 Celsius or Fahrenheit. The contents of the dish is 662 Fahrenheit, 350 Celsius. What I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to take it out, turn the oven off here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, Take it out and finish it off with some uh, flamage from a propane torch here. All right, I've got a uh, propane torch here. I'm going to cut the flame way down low. And we're going to go ahead and uh, finish incinerating this material with a uh, small propane flame here so I don't blow the stuff out of the dish. like the oven did a pretty good job of incinerating everything. I don't see any smoke coming off of here. Everything's pretty much uh, been burned up pretty good in here. I can't overemphasize how important this step is, incinerating this material to redness, uh, especially if I suspect that there may be some tin in with this and you seen there was soft solder earlier in the video so that means tin uh, what happens here is the nitric acid will react with the tin forming a tin paste that's the consistency of Elmer's glue and it will plug up a filter in a heartbeat if we incinerate this material to redness like I'm doing right here what will happen is that uh, metastatic acid will get burnt into a substance called tin oxide and the tin oxide does not dissolve uh, under the acids and it can then be easily filtered out. All right, now what we're going to do is put our incinerated material into a beaker here. First, I'm going to add about 500 ml of hydrochloric acid. All right, now I'm going to take the uh, gold filled material that's been incinerated, add it right to the hydrochloric acid here. heat on up here to about medium and we'll set this up here on the heat. Start heating it up. We've got a pipette here with 1 ml, 2 ml and 3 ml. What I'm going to do now is start adding nitric acid to the uh, mixture in the beaker there. It's a little over 3 ml right there. It's about three and a half more. Three and a half more, and three and a half more. So that's four doses of about three and a half ml of uh, concentrated nitric acid. reach in there and get a little bit of the solution on this filter paper and uh, make sure 
that we've got gold going in solution. I'm quite certain that we do. A little drop of stannous chloride on this. And you can see we got a black stain there. Definitely got gold going into solution. I've got uh, 10 doses of 3.5 ml each of concentrated nitric in here. That means I got a total of 35 ml of concentrated nitric acid in with the gold foils and the 500 ml of hydrochloric acid. I'm just going to let this cook for a while. Our mixture's been on heat for about uh, an hour now. I'm going to go ahead and add another 3.5 ml here and see what happens. If I get a big reaction, like I am, that means that there's uh, more things in there that need to go into solution. So we'll just let this go for a while. Going to add about 100 ml of hydrochloric acid here just to freshen things up inside the beaker. All right, I don't see a whole bunch of uh, solids in the beaker here. I see some sediment down there but not a whole lot left in there. I think we're pretty much done with the reaction here. All right, our mixture's been in here on the heat now for about an hour and a half. I've added two more doses of three and a half ml of nitric. I got a total of 42 in there, plus 600 ml of hydrochloric acid. So what I'm gonna do now, I think everything's gone into solution. Go ahead and turn the heat off. I'm going to transfer this solution into this tall beaker here. Let's see what we got going on in the bottom. I think everything's uh, pretty much dissolved. But I want to verify that. I'm going to transfer this solution into this tall beaker right now while it's hot. That's our gold bearing solution there. Just as I suspected, all we have in the bottom of the beaker is some, uh, looks like dirt. I think all the gold has been uh, dissolved into solution. Go ahead and put everything in this beaker. I want to let this settle. It's just dirt. Might be a couple little pieces up there of stuff that didn't go. All right, I've transferred the uh, gold bearing solution into this tall form beaker. And what I'm going to do is let this settle down real good, get all the solids to settle to the bottom, and we'll do a filtration on that. And over here, left in the beaker, I've got some uh, solid pieces of uh, metal. Not quite sure what that is. We'll get those out of there and uh, analyze them and see what those are. I just realized that I didn't add any uh, sulfuric acid to this and I want to do that to make sure that I precipitate out any lead that's present. There's a high likelihood that there's going to be some in here. It's about one ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid will react with any lead in here, forming lead sulfate, and then it can be easily 100% filtered out. All right, our solution is crystal clear. It's been allowed to settle overnight. Rather than pouring it into the uh, filter down there, uh, I choose to siphon it out because if I poured it, the sediment that settled to the bottom of the beaker uh, would become disturbed come out into the filter, load the filter paper up, and slow this filtering way down. The 
siphoning is an extra step and you gotta rinse the tube out but it sure speeds up the filtering process. Now that the bulk of the liquid has uh, been passed through the filter, I can add the sediment to the filter and only a minimal amount of liquid will have to pass through the sediment. Here you can see where the filtering operation slows way down to just drips after the sediment has been added to that filter paper and loaded the filter paper up. All right, we got the sediment out of the uh, gold solution here. What I'm going to do is uh, pour the solution into a clean beaker here. It's got a little bit of cloudiness that came over with it. But that's okay because we're going to do this, uh, refine this two times at least. Got a beaker here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pour our gold bearing solution in here so we can precipitate out the pure gold. Okay, I'm going to add sodium uh, metabisulfite here to precipitate the pure gold. see it instantly comes out of solution there. All right, I'm going to do a stannous chloride test here and make sure we got everything dropped out of solution. As you can see, all the gold has been uh, precipitated with the SMB. The gold has been allowed to settle. It's down here on the bottom of the beaker. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, empty the waste into my stock pot down here. The stock pot has copper in it and any uh, precious metals that are, in that, that are in that waste solution will cement out on the copper. Got a filter set up here. What we'll do now is go ahead and filter the, uh, the precipitated gold out of the beaker and get it into the funnel here, into the filter. Filter now. What I'm going to do is uh, rinse it off with a little bit of hydrochloric acid. This will help rinse out any kind of metals that might be in the solution that was in there with the gold. This hydrochloric acid rinse will uh, rinse out any dissolved metals that is uh, in with the gold that the uh, regular plain water rinse might not be able to get out of there. So that's why I rinse it with hydrochloric acid. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll put the uh, gold and the filter right back in the beaker it came out of. It's been rinsed out real well. Just pull the filter right back into this same beaker. Now I'll add some hydrochloric acid here about uh, 300 ml or so, up to the 300 ml level there on the beaker. Now we'll place it up here on the heat. Put it on about uh, medium low heat. Before I start dissolving the gold here, I'm going to add about uh, half an ml of high, or sulfuric acid here. This is concentrated sulfuric acid. start adding doses of nitric acid to the mixture of gold and hydrochloric acid 
This will be two ml at a time. There's one, two. ml doses of concentrated nitric acid. So far I've added seven 2 ml doses of concentrated nitric acid and as you can see here most of the gold has gone into solution. about 10 minutes since I added the last dose of uh, nitric and as you can see everything's in solution now we'll take this off the heat and let it cool down I had a few chips of ice here to cool our solution down so we can filter it I've got the solution cooled down now we'll go ahead and filter it It's all the color out of the filter here. Now we're going to take the funnel off. Pour the solution into a beaker here and precipitate it again with sodium metal bisulfite. We're going to add some sodium metal bisulfite and precipitate the pure gold a second time here. Our pure gold powder it took about an hour to settle. I like to see it settle a little quicker than that, and I did see just a touch of cloudiness in the uh, orange solution before we precipitated. So I'm going to go ahead and set up and refine this a third time. All right, first thing I'll do is pour the uh, waste solution off out of this beaker. To this flask because my stock pot is full. Now I'll get the gold in the filter again. Another quick rinse with some hydrochloric acid. Again, this rinses out any kind of metals that just plain water would not uh, be able to get to. All right, now what I'll do is uh, put the gold with the filter right back in this beaker. some hydrochloric acid about 300 ml or so that's 250 that'll be just fine put this up on the heat and start adding some more nitric acid here first I'm going to add some sulfuric acid just about a half ml or so I do this every time I dissolve it just in case some lead made it through the process this far all right, now I'm going to add nitric acid here. Last time it took about uh, 16 ml. 
So I'm going to add just about that much, I guess, here. There's three. Six. and 1 ml so 16 ml this only took about 10-12 minutes we've got everything in solution here so we're ready to go ahead and set this out so it can cool down and then we'll filter it and precipitate it again add a little ice here to cool it off so we can filter it Solution's cooled off. I've got a filter here. I'll filter the solution one more time under vacuum. Now this solution is much, much clearer now. I don't see any traces of cloudiness in it. It's pulling through the filter very quickly. This, after this third refining, we should have some good, nice, pure gold here. Alrighty, we're all done here. It's nice and clear. We'll transfer this to a beaker now, and we'll precipitate it for the third time. solution is crystal clear with no traces of cloudiness which indicates we're going to have some real pure gold here. I'm going to add some more uh, sodium metabisulfite precipitate the pure gold now. Third time. It's been allowed to settle. The uh, solution on top of it is absolutely crystal clear. No traces of cloudiness or uh, any color to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pour off this waste solution into my temporary stock pot, which is this flask. I'm going to pour the metal off or the pour the liquid off into here. stays in a nice cake there that's what I want to see there's our pure gold what I'll do now is I've got a filter set up here we'll go ahead and get this pure gold into a filter then I'll get it over on the melt tape when uh, we'll melt this up into a nice bar Again, I'll uh, add a little bit of hydrochloric acid to rinse it off in the filter. Here's our fine gold powder. And uh, once we get the hydrochloric acid drained through it, I'll get it into a melt dish and we'll melt this up to a nice bar. going to do now is get the, uh, the gold and the filter paper down into this melt dish here. Just kind of break it loose from the filter or from the funnel and then just kind of carefully get it down into the melt dish here. Just like that. Okay, now we'll take the gold, 
put it over here on the melt table and melt this up into a nice bar. Alright, here's our 999 fine gold bar. Just as shiny as it can be. No uh, traces of any kind of contamination. I'm going to put it on the scale here. And see what kind of weight we got on it. Whoa. That's way more than I was expecting. That's 28.5 grams. I was only expecting about uh, 15 to 17 grams. Okay, this little gold bar surprised me. There's way more there than I uh, thought there was going to be. But that's alright, I'll take it. It's a nice little gold bar, real bright, shiny surface. It's got a piece of little flux over here, I'll get rid of that. There's a few bubbles here. From where I poured it and some of the outgassing probably from the uh, graphite mold but uh, man it's a nice bright shiny bar we'll get this stamped up and I'll put this on my eBay store for sale immediately nice I've got the gold and a little bit of uh, dilute sulfuric acid to uh, take off any of that flux that came over with the pour So, this will conclude the gold-filled scrap refining video. Uh, this is the complete process from start to finish. Uh, it surprised me quite a bit. I was only expecting about 2 grams, 2.5 grams per 100 grams of gold-filled scrap. But what I got, in fact, was 28.5 grams of uh, pure gold. From the 740 grams of gold filled scrap that I processed. I don't know how to account for that. I didn't add anything. The only thing that went in there was the gold filled scrap that I uh, showed in the video. In fact, I ended up taking some of it out because it uh, didn't look like it was gold to me. But anyway, we got a 28.5 gram uh, gold bar here, pure gold, 999 fine gold. I've got my uh, my name's three tips stamped on here. It's got the weight, 28.5 grams. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and list this on my eBay store and just let it go for bids. Uh, if you go there and look at the, at the gold bar here that I'm going to be selling on my eBay store, make sure and take a look at some of the other gold items. I sell gold and silver jewelry on my eBay store, and that's how I support this uh my videos uh, I'd rather do that I'd rather sell something nice to you at a greatly reduced price so you get something and then I make a little bit of money so I can keep uh, refining precious metals and making videos so while you're there 
make sure and take a look at some of the other items that I have for sale on my eBay store. My eBay username is Baffleus, B-A-F-E-L-O-U-S. Or you can just type in my uh, Sweet Tips. I'm putting that in the title of each of my listings. So if you type Sweet Tips into the search block on eBay, it should pull up my items. And then you can take a look at those. I'm going to go ahead and open this up to Canada. This one will be available to be bid on from Canada. Uh, if you are the winning bidder in Canada, please wait before you pay until I can send you an invoice to show you how much the shipping is going to be. I'm going to have to include some insurance with this one. So if you're the winning bidder in Canada, please uh, wait before you pay until I send you an invoice. Okay, that'll do it. Thanks for watching.